Hi everyone, can you believe it's August 2024 already? Well, I guess it's time for the new installment of Tinnitus Updates and News. In this installment, we actually have a few really interesting topics and an update on the Susan Shaw University of Michigan buying model stimulation device. A few of you asked me about this device, so I will share with you the updates I could find. This month we are covering your eyes and ears are connected. The migraines and tinnitus connection. How the ear signals to our brain that there's hearing impairment. And University of Auckland Innovative Digital Therapy. Let's get the update on the Susan Show device out of the way so we can focus on the really interesting topics. All I can find until now is that they are still going through regulatory process. They are expected to come out with the device in 2025 or 2026, depending on how this process goes. I do want to mention though that this device is really aimed at somatic tinnitus. If you're not sure what somatic tinnitus is, then check the link somewhere up here that will explain to you all the different types of tinnitus and even the best treatment plan per tinnitus type. Scientists at Duke University have made a groundbreaking discovery. The ears emit subtle sounds when the eyes move and these sounds can reveal where the eyes are looking. This finding, led by Dr. Jennifer Grow indicates that eye movements can be decoded by analyzing these faint ear sounds, providing new insights into the interplay between vision and hearing. The study found that specific sounds generated in the ear correspond to different directions of eye movement. This unique auditory signature can be used to determine where a person is looking, just from the sounds recorded by a microphone in the ear canal. These ear sounds might result from the brain contracting middle ear muscles or hair cells, which typically help in sound regulation. The exact purpose of these ear squeaks is still unclear, but they may play a role in fine-tuning auditory perception by aligning visual and auditory inputs. Understanding these ear sounds could lead to new diagnostic tools for hearing and potentially help identify which parts of the ear are malfunctioning. This could be especially useful for people with hearing or vision loss. Dr. Groh's team is now exploring whether these ear sounds differ in individuals with sensory impairments and how they might correlate with performance on tasks requiring sound localization. This research could pave the way for innovative clinical tests and therapeutic approaches, especially for conditions like tinnitus and auditory processing disorders. Emerging research has identified a significant link between migraines and tinnitus. Individuals with migraines are more likely to experience tinnitus, potentially due to shared neural mechanisms like central sensitization. Key findings so far include migraine sufferers often report tinnitus, with studies showing a strong correlation between the two conditions. Medications used for migraines, such as tricyclic antidepressants and CGRP antagonists, have shown potential in reducing tinnitus symptoms. Researchers are exploring the effectiveness of migraine medications in treating tinnitus. Clinical trials are underway to determine the safety and efficacy of these treatments for tinnitus relief. The goal is to understand how these medications can alleviate both migraine and tinnitus symptoms by targeting common pathways. Further studies are crucial to confirm the benefits of these treatments and potentially offer new therapeutic options for those affected by both conditions. This research highlights a promising avenue for treatment, offering hope to many suffering from these interrelated conditions. Researchers at Linkoping University have uncovered a crucial mechanism by which the ear communicates its health status to the brain. This discovery revolves around a DC signal, an electrical signal from the cochlear's hair cells, 
whose role had been unclear since its discovery 70 years ago. Researchers found that the cochlea generates two types of electrical signals when sound waves hit the hair cells, the well-known AC signal, which conveys information about sound, loudness, and pitch, and the lesser understood DC signal. The DC signal's polarity shifts in response to exposure to harmful noise, indicating changes in the ear's condition. The study found that the DC signal turns negative when the ear is damaged by loud sounds. This change may act as a notification system for the brain, indicating that the ear is not functioning normally. The brain can then prioritize resources, deciding whether to amplify or ignore the weak signals from the impaired ear. This discovery opens new avenues for diagnosing noise-induced hearing loss by monitoring the DC signal. Understanding and interpreting the signal could lead to better ways of detecting and managing hearing impairment, especially in noisy environments where many are at risk. The researchers plan to further investigate how the DC signal can be measured and utilized in clinical settings. They are particularly interested in how this signal can help in diagnosing and preventing noise-induced hearing damage. Researchers at the University of Auckland have made significant strides in developing a new mobile phone-based therapy for tinnitus known as the Digital Polytherapeutic App. This innovative approach has demonstrated promising results in clinical trials offering a potentially more effective treatment for those suffering from this challenging condition. In a randomized clinical trial involving 61 patients, the group using the Digital Polytherapeutic app showed clinically significant improvements after 12 weeks, in contrast to a controlled group using a popular white noise app. About 65% of participants using the Polytherapeutic app reported meaningful improvement in their tinnitus symptoms compared to 43% in the white noise group. The therapy begins with an initial assessment by an audiologist who customizes the treatment plan to the patient's specific tinnitus profile. This personalized approach includes various digital tools such as goal-based counseling and interactive games designed to help manage symptoms more effectively. The therapy is aimed at retraining the brain, making tinnitus sounds less noticeable and disruptive. The comprehensive nature of the app, combining sound therapy with cognitive behavioral techniques, provides a holistic treatment approach. The Digital Polytherapeutic app represents a significant advancement in tinnitus treatment. Its design allows for a faster and potentially more effective solution than traditional methods, which often require longer periods to show results. The research team is currently working towards gaining regulatory approval, with plans to refine the prototype and expand trials both locally and internationally. They hope to make the app clinically available within the next six months, offering new hope for millions of tinnitus sufferers worldwide. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate your support. Don't miss out on the latest updates in the world of tinnitus treatment. Hit that subscribe button and stay connected with me. I'm committed to bringing you not just the latest news, but real solutions, support, and a journey toward better hearing health. Remember, together, we're making strides toward a quieter and more comfortable life.